In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your chat tree. We'll go over all the different kinds of blocks and how to set them up and how to manipulate your chat tree. Now, first off, there's some ready-made chat trees, so you don't have to start from scratch. You can pull this down. We have standard. These are more general topics like customer acquisition, customer feedback, selling software, webinars, taking orders. Spokesperson, these are more your niches, child care, dentist office. We can choose the language. Now HumanBot is able to translate the chats into the region that the visitor is from. But if you know this human bot is always going to be used in a certain country, you can have it translated by default into that language and choose it here. and It'll translate this pre-made tree into that language. We also have a search. So let's find a dentist. Here's our dentist. We hit load and it gives us a tree already made. You can see I'm clicking, holding, and I can drag the tree around, click, holding, letting up. You kind of get way off to the side. You can hit center, kind of brings it back. So I can see the tree, but let's build our own tree. So let's hit clear the tree. Yes. Back to a blank tree, no blocks. Let's click here, add an action. Now the standard block is just a text block. All it's going to do is show text and that's it. I have up to three lines. It is Elena. Nice to see you. Now we can add a short code. Click this, gives us a little pop up. So we can insert in an emoji either a static one, an animated one, or some data. Now these are special codes that are pre-filled in, either based on things that the visitor says later in the chat, or based on their location or their fixed data. For example, there's avatar. So instead of writing her name in here, which may change, then we could forget to update that. We could insert in the avatar shortcode. See the name of the shortcode here in brackets. And the human bot will automatically fill this in with the proper name, Helena, for us. Another example of this pre made is country detected. So we could say, I see your from and it could list their countries. So I could say I could see you're from the United States. Now there's other fields. These are things that you'll see later here that the visitor has entered when they've entered their name, their email, their phone number, they've entered a date, a time, or a location it's able to repeat that back to the user. Let's delete a block, delete this one, and let's save this block. And we've created our first block. It's a text block. Next block in the tree, let's add a question. So at the top, we put in our text. What is your name? scroll down we have some options now this is the type of answer it can just be text that's kind of a universal catch-all so they can enter anything in that they'd like so rather than those pre-made ones like name phone number we could instead say what's your favorite food and have the key be food this though is name this is one of the built-in ones so we can assign this as type name and you can see these all map to those different shortcuts we were just looking at. So name, save, and the next one, we do a yes, no. This is gonna give the visitor two choices. 
So for example, we can say, we'd like to give you a great deal. Is this something you'd like? We have the new choices. We can customize this if we want. Just leave this yes and no. And this is the simple version. See, there's an advanced chat. So the simple version, the yes reply. So if they hit yes, you say great. And if they say no, you really don't want to miss this. Save. And in the next block, we can prompt them for their email address. What's your email? Or type email. Now you notice that since this is a simple, not advanced, yes, no, no matter what they say, it's going to say their reply and it's going to continue onto the same block. We can change this to an advanced chat where it's actually going to branch so we can get more of a detailed flow. So if I change this and remove these, now you can see we actually have a branch. This path for the yes answer, this path for the no answer. So if they said yes, it will ask them for their email. If they said no, we could perhaps say, offer them a URL that they can visit instead. Now even these branches can branch. So if I were to add an action here, and let's just, for example, say, you prefer cats or dogs another yes no advanced let's change this so choice one is cats choice two is now dogs you can see we have two different trees so in this one now we can offer them some cat related products this one we can offer them some dog related products and you can see how you can make some really sophisticated chat workflows Let's take a look at some more block types. Next we have buttons. This is going to give a fixed list of different options that the visitors can pick from. So you say, what is your favorite color? And then rather than leaving it open-ended, we could just say red, green, blue, purple, yellow. So you can add up to five. Of this saved under color. Next up, URL. This is pretty straightforward. I'll give a clickable link. You have the option for some text. So it'll show that instead of the link. And I click on it, and it'll still open up the URL. And we can choose how it's going to open. It'll either open as a new tab or download. If, for example, you're linking them PDF file or zip file. And if you'd rather have this appear as a button rather than text, you can turn this on. Picture. So show a picture in the chat. So look at this cat picture. Upload an image kittens, and it'll display in the chat. I also have the option of using animated GIFs. You can also upload actual videos. Either upload an MP4 from your computer or paste in a YouTube or Vimeo video. It'll play embedded in the chat. They can click it for full screen. There it is. Next up, keywords. Now this is a simple way to respond to questions without using any AI. It's all based on matching keywords. So, once this starts, it'll say, how can I help you? You can adjust all this. Here's what it says. If what the visitor typed doesn't have any of the keywords that we specified below, sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. 
And here's what the button says that they'll click when they want to leave this keywords block. By default, it'll keep prompting them, how can I help, until they hit I'm done. Unless you check this box, then as soon as they get their first answer, it'll leave. So how do we do this? Keywords, let's say we have a webinar. This is our sign up page. We think of like the common questions that people want to ask. They may say schedule. We put each one separated by a comma, so they may say schedule. When, what time, and the response. Be a Monday at 7 p.m. That's the first one. Let's say people might want to know how much it is. So we can say how much, cost, money. Say it will cost $25 to register. So this is a simplified chat block where it's only going to watch for these keywords and give these responses and nothing else. Save this. Let's jump to AI Smart Chat, because this is one of the big headline features of the app. This one is a much more advanced version of the keywords that we just looked at. It uses actual AI, so they'll be able to talk to it, ask general questions, have a conversation just like with a real person. Now you do still have the option for keywords and responses if you want to make sure that the human bot gives very specific answer that the AI may not know. For example, your, you know, your support email. But I'll show you later, there's even more powerful feature with this, where you'll be able to give the AI smart chat web pages and documents, and it will read them and learn them. So you won't have to tell it the, your location or your support email or your services, the AI will actually look at those pages and learn them and be able to answer them automatically. Let's save this. Now we jumped over the live chat block. We'll go into this more in depth in a separate video, but basically by adding this block, it's going to allow the visitor to drop into a live chat with you. You're going to have a special website that you can log into and it'll give you a little alert when there's a visitor at the site that wants to chat, and you'll be able to jump in and type with them directly through our instant messenger. This is a record block. It's gonna give them a button where they can leave a message. They'll record it in their browser with their microphone, and we have the option to send a notification and enter your email. So as soon as you record a message, you'll get an email with a link so you'll be able to play back the message that they recorded. We have a slider. This is a great way to show off some different featured products. For example, you can upload a image, give it a title, give it a price. What the button should say and where the button should go. one and a second product and so on and they give it a nice little slider that they will flip back and forth through see the different products click on the ones they like and get taken directly to the product page Final block type, exit survey. Now you can throw this block into the end of any of your chat tree branches. It'll only work at the end. Basically, it's gonna ask the visitor if they are satisfied, if they got all the answers they needed. And if not, they can either start a live chat or get an email to contact. So here you'd enter in your email. And it just makes it easier to add this little exit survey to every branch. Especially since you may have multiple endpoints. You know, you don't want to add it into each one. It's a great way to see that the visitor is happy. 
Now one final thing on this step shows you how to move around. You also notice as I hover over blocks, there's some options. We have a plus, so let's say I needed to add a block in between these two. I can hit plus here, and here's our new block right in between. We also have the option to delete a block. And we can move a block. We have an up and a down. So if I wanted this to become the first block, click this, now at the top, and I can move it back down.